Can I buy Lightfall, complete its entire campaign, and then still get a refund? Steam allows you to request a refund on anything that has been played for less than two hours, so that made me wonder, would they still give me a refund if I had finished the whole Lightfall campaign? So today, that's exactly what we're going to try to do. Alright, Lightfall has been purchased and we're starting in 3, 2, 1, and it has begun. As you can see, the timer is ticking and unfortunately, because Steam is recording how long I play, it counts every second that I have the game open. That includes every loading screen, every cutscene, every unskippable dialogue, and literally everything else that I do while I have the game open. All right, there it is, the Lightfall campaign. Let's quickly load in and get it started. Dude, I am so nervous right now because there are no redos on this. Like once you buy it, you can't go back. I picked up the Lightfall quest from Nimbus, and my first objective was to go speak to Osiris. But little did I know, this was going to cost me a lot of time. Like right now, Osiris is just talking and talking and talking, and I can't do anything. Like, I'm just wasting time. Now I have to go talk to Rohan too? We've already wasted three minutes and I haven't done anything yet other than go to Neomuda and talk to people. After what felt like forever, the dialogue finally ended and I launched into an actual mission. Heading into this first mission, I was feeling nervous, but also pretty confident. After all, I had practiced this mission many times in preparation for the speedrun. But I guess I didn't practice enough, because what happened next was pretty embarrassing. Wow, seriously? I was so far away from that draw pod. <laughs> that is so, oh, that is so unfortunate. And it spawned me all the way back here too. That is really sad. Luckily, I have Shatterskate to catch me up here, but still, dude, oh my gosh. I finished collecting the remaining keycards while being sure to give the drop pods plenty of extra room, and I quickly moved on to the next step, which uh, I thought was pretty boring. Oh, keep them off of me while I override this. Dude, I had really hoped that we had moved past the era of defend your ghost objectives. Like, I don't know. I just can't think of anything more boring than sitting around defending your ghost from waves of enemies. People have been complaining about this since 2014. All right, nice. Three out of three waves. As I moved on to the final room, I could feel the clock ticking away. The campaign takes eight hours on average, so I was not confident I could complete it in under two. But I did have a few tricks up my sleeve to save a little time. So I progressed the objective by going over there, and now I'm actually going to go back over here, switch over to my solar bills because there's a boss coming up, and rally. Normally people would rally first, just because, you know, the rally flag comes first, but that's just a way to save a few seconds, and there's a lot of strategies that I've come up with like throughout this campaign, just little things to optimize and save a few seconds, because in a run like this, like every single second counts. Hopefully I can burn this guy down right here. Okay, now I just have to draw, dodge the drop pods. There's a whole bunch more coming in. I've died to those drop pods on practice runs so many times. All right, we made it. First mission down in nine minutes. Not gonna lie, that's a little bit behind schedule. I've really got to pick up the pace if I want to be able to beat this. After completing my first mission, I talked to Nimbus to progress the campaign quest, and then I located the flag to start the next mission. But on my way over to the flag, things didn't go quite according to plan. After I started the mission, everything started to go much better. I executed my deliberately planned Shatterskate route to quickly fly across Neomuna and arrive at my first group of enemies. This is the main guy you gotta kill, but then there's still a few more guys around here that I have to kill. Basically all of these guys by the entrance on this side. I think I have to kill them before I can open the door. Oh, there's loot here? I do not remember there's being loot at this section. That's funny. Okay, I think there's a pretty cool, like, skip that people don't know about here. It's not a very large skip, but you can kind of just avoid this whole room by just landing right here and then jumping through this little gap and boom, you're in the next room and you can just continue on. Oh my gosh, I hate turrets so much. You're losing valuable time. <laughs> Osiris knows that we're doing a speedrun. He's talking about us losing time. I cleared out the next room of enemies very efficiently, but then it was time for the scariest part of this whole speedrun. Oh no, it's time for the elevator. Dude, this thing is my worst nightmare. Like, I could, I could lose the entire run just because of this thing. It just randomly decides to kill you and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, come on. See? 
it it does stuff like this and there's nothing i can do to prevent it it is such bs this whole elevator system is just so scuffed like why does it why is it like jerking me back and forth in these violent like ugly motions all right we just gotta dunk this in that was a really scuffed dunk, but it's all good. All right, we just got to add clear here super fast, and then a Tormentor is going to come in. We already have a Honed Edge times four, so that should be a pretty decent counter to him. He spawns right in here. There he is. There we go. Oh, yes, the radial mast. How many times are we going to hear about the radial mast? Actually, you know what? Uh, to my future self who is uh, editing this video, let's have a counter of every time they say radial mast or the veil. Let's let's just put it on screen and count up for the entire video. That'll be funny. I proceeded to clear out a room of enemies, run through a bunch of random hallways, and then I finally breathed a sigh of relief after I survived the final elevator of death. All right, so my strategy here is I'm going to cap this one all the way and then skate over to the other side cap that one all the way and then finally go down in the middle area i feel like that's i feel like that's the fastest way to do it i captured both of the circles dunked both of the cores and then i had to clear a bunch of ads that had piled up so i have strands and i could use my super right here but I actually think it's probably just optimal for me to, you know, stand up here and just blast all of the ads with my Trinity Ghoul. You know, it's probably faster than like walking all the way around to these individual spots where they're spawning to take them out with a super. Uh, Cause yeah, Trinity Ghoul is just the absolute goat for AOE and ad clear and stuff. So at this point, the run was going amazing. I was clearing all the ads super efficiently and it really felt like my preparation was paying off until this happened oh <laughs> no <laughs> oh my gosh exhaustion just made me stumble off the edge of a cliff <laughs> oh no okay actually i think i think that's totally fine because it didn't like reset us or anything you know i like i don't think we lost any progress from that happening so that's actually just kind of funny <laughs> all right finally Kaidel's coming to rescue us then we can go I would do this section with sparrows, but uh, it's just so much faster to shatter skate. And also it's much less dangerous, especially because I don't have the always on time sparrow. So if I was doing normal sparrows here, like there's a, a really high chance that I would just die to the enemies. Nice. Okay. That was really clean. That was really fast. Whew, that was good. Oh, skip, skip, skip the cutscene. It's not letting me skip the cutscene. Okay, there we go. I've never wanted to skip a cutscene more in my life and it wouldn't let me skip it. Where is the next campaign? Really? Go talk to Osiris in the Hall of Heroes? After speeding my way over to Osiris, he proceeded to lecture me again, but this time he was glitched out so he wasn't even making any sound. Afterward, I had to talk to Nimbus and then finally travel halfway across Neomuna in order to begin my next mission. This all took about three minutes, but with the help of some movement tech, I was off to a fantastic start on my next mission. I wiped out the first few rooms with ease and made it to phase two of the Hydra boss, but then I had my first major setback. I want to use my sword here, but I'm a little concerned because I know that there's going to be a bunch of exploding guys spawning in here in just a second. Oh, and I'm stuck in this thing. Oh no. Oh, that was so unfortunate. I didn't have a shotgun to break myself out of the barrier, and then the exploding guy spawned right next to me. Yeah, that is actually a pretty big setback. It's all the way back at the beginning of this boss. Oh no. All right, much cleaner clear of the room that time. On to the next one, on to the next one. All right, I'm going to put a dusk field and then just go insane with my sword. And hopefully we'll be good. This should take him out pretty fast. Nice. Now we just need to shoot all these other conflex things. One, two, three. And sweet. People always ask, uh, why are you using L2, you know, like left trigger two as your interact button? Um, and the reason is I play Trials of Osiris relatively often and in Trials, getting revives is super important. And if I make revive my L2 button, all I have to do is stand near a teammate and aim and I will automatically get the revive every time. So it's, it's super handy. I really wanted to make up for lost time, so I took a pretty aggressive approach in this next room. Get 
This is a little risky here because there are two Tormentors on me right now, but all I have to do is take out the Tormentors and then everyone else will despawn. Okay, nope, I'm getting out of here. All right, nice. That works, that works. I proceeded to pick up Strand, grapple my way to the top of the building, and explode a bunch of barrels to finish off the mission. After flying out of the building, I had to wait a few minutes for character dialogue, so I took a quick break to get some water. My next step was to talk to Nimbus, and then I had to locate the flag for the next mission. A slight miscalculation of my movement almost caused me to die, but fortunately Shadow Legion Cabal have worse aim than Stormtroopers, so everything was all good. I proceeded to barely pick up this strand source while falling off the box, and then I grappled my way over to my next objective. Oh, uh, this is so annoying, it's giving me all these definitions of strand. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I'm glad that these definitions are here, like, it's really important for the first time you play, but after that it's just annoying. I didn't used to know this, but you can use your grapple while you're carrying these, like, these energy balls. So it's actually super easy to just pick one up, grapple it over, and dunk it in. Oh gosh, I'm exhausted. I remember day one of the campaign, me and my friends were just getting so annoyed by getting exhausted. It felt like we got exhausted every two seconds. I shatter skated my way across a bridge and wiped out a huge group of enemies, but then I encountered a pretty annoying problem. Can I interact with it? No, I can't. It's just gonna make me wait like 10 years before I can interact with this strand source, and it's required for progressing the mission, which really sucks. Right here, I actually discovered something really helpful. It turns out if you shatter dive while you're picking up the strand, it skips the really long animation and saves a ton of time. So you notice I picked up a tangle there and I'm keeping it. The reason is because in this next section, there are these little prism things that you need to hit with tangles and tangles actually have a cooldown and I would have had to wait for another cooldown had I not carried that tangle from the previous area. Oh yeah, time for the ultimate strand tutorial. Oh, this is... wow. Whoa, this is wow. That's uh, some great dialogue, 10 out of 10. I used my tangles to destroy more prisms, my trinity ghoul to zap some huge groups of vex, and my sword to melt some minotaurs before inevitably getting exhausted. Oh, yep, I'm exhausted again. Oh, my favorite part. Seriously, am I stuck in this halfway reload animation? Because that's what I was doing when I became exhausted. Okay, there should be a big guy spawning in, yep. And then I have to take his core and dunk it up top. Which again, I'm going to use my grapple to get up there. Super fast, super speedy. I am exhausted and getting blasted by everybody. Fun. Alright, cool. The ultimate strand tutorial is complete. Before starting the next part of the quest, I had to drive my sparrow all the way across Neomuna again. Normally I would just enjoy the ride, but not gonna lie, I was just stressing about how long it was taking for me to reach the next mission. The you can jump over these? Yeah, you can jump over those, it's actually really hard to do on controller, but you can jump over those little things if you boost right at the correct time. Luckily, you don't have to kill those guys up there, I used to think that you did, but you kind of just have to go stand by this suppressor. This mission is called No Time Left. Yeah, um, honestly, it's not wrong. You might think like, oh, you only have a few more missions, but those final missions take so long. Like the final mission with Callus, there's like this part where you have to defeat waves and waves and waves of Cabal. That part takes ages. And then there's also like steps after that. Like after we finish everything, we still have to go to the tower and like talk to Zavala, talk to Ikora, and then come back and talk to Nimbus. So there's like, there's plenty of steps that are going to take a while towards the end, so honestly I do feel like we're falling a bit behind here. See, this this is the mission with a lot of tanks, and th these things scare me, because if the tank just kind of rotates and hits you the wrong way, you're just dead, and there's nothing you could do about it, so yes, here comes my own tank. Let's go. Much better than fighting tanks on the other side. Alright, so right here I'm actually going to hop off my tank and get on a sparrow. Just because it's slightly faster, but it's also slightly more risky because I don't have always on time and those guys could have just killed me, but luckily they did not. We're good, we're good. I defeated the Tormentor, picked up some Strand, and then I was ready to make a big brain play. Alright, here we got my super, take out this suppressor, then we're gonna fly- oh my gosh, that guy pushed me so far. Then we're gonna fly over here, and there's one more suppressor that I have to take out. And then, normally you get exhausted right here, but what I'm gonna do is fly right here so that I can hop in a tank, and tanks can't get exhausted! GG Bungie, well played! I drove my tank around, blasted some random Cabal, and then Rohan showed up earlier than expected. 
Is that all? Oh, wow. I thought there were many more waves of this, but... Okay, we got Rohan here. He's just going to bust himself through the wall. There we go. I don't know why it allows you to have sparrows in this section, but I'm not complaining. It's much faster than just walking. Going into this next room, I did have a plan, but I also knew that this was going to be one of the most stressful parts of the whole run. Yeah, so here I'm going to do that trick again where I go forward, progress the objective, and then come back to actually rally the flag and switch my loadout. As soon as the boss comes in, I'm going to blade barrage him, hopefully. Oh, it kind of missed a little bit. That's okay. I had to use a rocket there, which was less than ideal, but most of the time you can progress to the next phase with just blade barrage, which is nice. Oh my gosh, I'm getting knocked around so much right now. Just got to cast my super here, try to grapple. They're canceling my grapple. I did not mean to cast that finisher. Oh gosh, and now the tank is right on me. These tanks are extremely scary. This whole part of the mission is extremely scary because there's just, there's so many enemies everywhere. And then the tank is like chasing you wherever you go as well. Oh my gosh, there's so many dogs. Okay, finally. Honestly, I, I think this is kind of what made this whole thing feel kind of lame to me the first time I did it. Because, like, the whole reason he dies is because we just suck at using Strand. I don't know. It just it just doesn't feel that great to me. We, we can't. Yeah, my ghost is just like, yeah, we can't use Strand. Sorry, now you're dead. As I said earlier, I was already feeling a bit behind, but this next step of the campaign was about to catch me off guard and make me feel even more behind. Complete the hypernet current strike? Oh no, dude, I did not account for this. I totally forgot that this was part of the campaign. Oh man, oh no. This is gonna take forever. And then also like I have to account for the blueberries too. Like they're probably gonna be running this like the most leisurely pace you can possibly imagine. And it just started with only two out of three. Great, we're not even gonna have a third teammate. All right, so I've actually equipped Void here because I feel like there's some points at the beginning of this strike where you can just kind of sneak past everything and not really worry about it. Like, I don't think you really have to kill any of these enemies. So hopefully I'll just run past them and my blueberry is already somehow far behind. I think like somewhere up here, there's a point where he can join allies. Hopefully that helps. There is a Tormentor, I believe, in this section of the strike. So I am going to pull out Iznagi and hopefully that will just absolutely destroy the Tormentor so that we can move on. Oh, there he is already. Wow. Dude, I am choking my Izanagi shots right now. There we go. Oh, that did big damage. He's pretty low. Maybe I can just sort him. This is very risky, but... Okay, good. Once you kill the Tormentor, all the other guys should despawn. So I think I can just dunk down this hole right here. Yep, there we go. Sweet. So just doing a little bit of like rough math in my head right here, like I don't think that I'm going to be able to get this challenge done. Like if I had to guess right now, I would say I don't complete it, but I do still think that there is a chance. So I'm going to continue and hope for the best. Dude, I feel like this is uh, the closest thing that Destiny has to aim training. Like I, I feel like I'm in Kovacs right now, blasting all these little things. To my future self editing this video, cue the sparrow racing music. It's actually really lucky that I have some blueberries that are kind of contributing. Most of the time when I run strikes, like the blueberries are just like AFK or not helping at all. So just got to blast all these blights. Oh, nice. One of them is helping. Let's go. <laughs> His name is I'm uninstalling. Yeah, aren't we all, man? Aren't we all? Nice. All right, we got it. On to the next section. Just have to fly up in this elevator. We don't have too much special ammo, but we do have a honed edge times four loaded in. So that should do some big damage to the boss. And hopefully I can loot some more special ammo here soon. Oh no. Gotta, gotta survive. Dying here would be extremely bad. Because this is the most important part of the mission with clearing these little blights. And my blueberry friends don't really know how to do it, so... I'm basically on my own when it comes to clearing the blights. 
All right, nice. Might as well use the remainder of this to DPS the boss. It does okay damage. Not that great, but it's something. Things were actually going really good, but then I made a mistake. Vex Striker, I've completed a bounty. Wow, I wonder how long I've had that bounty. Oh no, wow. I, that was my bad. I just stood directly in those two blights as they blasted me. That was really unfortunate. Hopefully the blueberries don't throw here. Let's go. He's. Oh, what? I, I was going to say he's going for a res and then he just passed me up. Okay, okay, good. He's still going for a res. Nice. All right, there we go. We got the mission down. With the strike now complete, I was feeling a bit more optimistic about my chances. All right, with an hour and 17 minutes on the clock, I have two more missions to do, including the extremely long one at the end and all of the post-mission stuff, like going to talk to Zavala in the tower. So I don't know. I feel like we executed that strike really well, so we still have a chance of doing this. But also, it's going to be really close if we end up getting it. My next mission was really far away, but luckily I was able to travel there in less than a minute thanks to the travel route that I designed specifically for this purpose. Ooh, that's a clean shatter skate. This is going pretty well so far in terms of speed getting to the actual mission. Just got to loot this strand thing and then grapple over here. All right, glowing, non-glowing, and then glowing. Glowing, non-glowing, and glowing. All right, done. On to the next part. Uh, same as last time. Glow, non-glow, and then glow. Yeah, you get stuck there for a second. There's kind of a barrier in the way. I just wanted to show this gameplay because it felt like Trinity Ghoul was designed for this exact moment. It was just beautiful. Finally, this this mission, it doesn't exhaust you after using Strand. After being exhausted like 500 times in the previous few missions, I had, I had had enough. Oh no. Oh my gosh, that ledge. I, I am so lucky that ledge was there. It just saved me so hard. I wiped out some more enemies, correctly entered the code on the next puzzle, and then I was ready for another lovely Strand tutorial. Yeah, I know some people are like pros of running this mission extremely fast. Uh, I'm not one of those people, but if we can get it complete in like, I don't know, 90 seconds or something, that's probably sufficient for this video. Nice. There we go. All right. I think I can just super the boss. Yes. I'm standing in his burn, but it's not doing any damage. So I'm just kind of chilling. All right. Nice. We're good. Oh, I was going to the wrong portal. All right, well, 125 and a half. We have just over half an hour to do the final mission and all of the steps that happen after the final mission. Given our current position, I am optimistic. It's gonna be close one way or the other. That's what I know for sure right now. It's very convenient that this mission start happens to be right here because if I had to go all the way across Neomuna and spend another two minutes traveling, like who knows, that those two minutes could be the difference between succeeding and failing this challenge. With the final mission now underway, I flew through all the empty rooms at the beginning and then grappled my way up to the first group of enemies in record time. I took out a few waves of Cabal and then disabled the shield for the anti-air turrets. However, I didn't destroy the anti-air turrets right away. The reason why I'm jumping over here before shooting the thing that's over there is because it takes like there's a decent amount of time that you have to wait before uh, it is becomes shootable so this way I don't waste any time I can spend that time running over here which of course I would have to do anyway so I think if I just pretend to jump off this platform maybe it will summon the tormentor ah yes there he is please don't suppress me so I can super you Nice. Okay, let's, let's go. Dude, the problem with using supers against Tormentors is sometimes they, they just suppress you, which is extremely unfortunate. And there we go. Got that. And time to shatter skate to the final area. Probably the cleanest shatter skate of my life, not gonna lie. The one thing with these weapons is they are great for taking out the tanks, but sometimes if you accidentally place them like slightly behind the tank, then the tank will just move forward and it won't hit them at all, which really sucks. Yeah, see, this part of the mission is the part that takes forever. Like, we're going to sit here taking out these waves of cabals for like 10 years, and then there's going to be more waves of cabal and more waves of cabal and more waves of cabal. There's like... 
There's like 20 minutes worth of waves of Cabal. I remember my team on day one was just so confused. We we're like, are we doing something wrong? Like, why does the Cabal keep coming over and over and over? But no, it turns out we were doing everything perfectly. There's just like a trillion Cabal in this area. Trinity Ghoul, once again, absolutely destroying these guys. Trinity Ghoul was doing work, and I was clearing this area much faster than I did in my practice runs. Things were looking great, and I still had about half an hour left on the clock. Let me guess, there's a tank coming soon? Oh, yep, there he is. He almost blasted me in the back when I wasn't looking. That would have been extremely unfortunate. <laughs> there's no end to them? Yeah, that is right. There is literally no end to them. Oh, got another tank. We saw it coming this time, luckily. I'm pretty sure if I die in this section too, there's like, it's, yeah, you can see at the top of my screen by my health bar, respawning is restricted, so I'd have to redo this whole part. I don't think it starts me back on like the first wave of Cabal, but still, it starts you, it sets you back significantly, which would really suck. Oh my gosh, I barely dodged that. Oh, and there's missiles coming out everywhere. This is scary, bro. All right, so here I'm going to pull a classic shadow move. I used to run double snipers all the time in like PvP back when special ammo was really common. But this time I'm running it so that I can deal with tormentors. So my idea is to hit their shoulder pads with my normal sniper and then switch over to my other sniper to fully take them out. There we go. See, it basically feels like you're one-shotting the Tormentor if you can do it that way. It's true, I did make quick work of that first Tormentor, but what happened next nearly gave me a heart attack. Oh, no. Oh, okay, good, there's respawns here. I one-shotted the Tormentor again, which was perfect, exactly what we needed, but I also died. <laughs> I traded with the Tormentor. I'm really glad that didn't happen in the previous part where respawns were restricted because that definitely would have cost me the run. If I had died during that part, like, there's no way I complete the challenge at that point. Is that it? Oh, yep. Time for Callus to just uh, blast a hole in the wall with his voice somehow. Yep. Okay, there we go. Downward we go, downward we go. Ready for the world's greatest shatter dive? The greatest shadow dive of all time. This is truly epic. And somehow I, I ranked up while diving <laughs> and added bonus, extra cool. I think they actually did a really good job of making this mission truly feel underground, you know, by having to dive down literally like thousands of feet into the ground. It's pretty cool. We have to interact with this terminal. Bro, load, please, please, please. Callus is also like not the easiest boss fight of all time. It's not like mega hard, but I also think that there's like a decent chance that I die during that boss fight, which could totally screw us here. The world's second greatest shatter dive of all time. I love how they're like, the Emperor is smashing through the place. And then like two seconds later, you see the Emperor and he's just, he's just standing there like extremely chill. Like he hasn't moved in three centuries. Yeah, he's just hanging out. Like I've been here, I've been waiting for you. Okay, so here actually what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to Void and I'm gonna have a rocket launcher and Izanagi's Burden to deal maximum damage. And then I also have Orpheus Riggs so that I can do my triple tether on him. Reload all my weapons here. All right, here goes nothing. <laughs> All right, we got some invis here. Re recoup for a second, regenerate my HP. I'm really tempted to just cast my super right now, but then we wouldn't really have anything for the next phase. And I'm already, I'm already basically out of ammo as it is. So I've really got to conserve here. Seriously, that guy flinched me right at the exact wrong moment. All right, he's going to phase two, but there's still Tormentors everywhere. I'm completely out of all my ammo, except for primary, obviously, because it's infinite. But I do have my super, so hopefully I don't get suppressed here by a Tormentor. And I hopefully I don't fall off the map either. Since I had no ammo, this was not an ideal situation, and things were about to get really ugly. Oh, this is truly unfortunate. Oh, no. Oh no. Oh no. Is that special ammo? Oh, I thought that was special ammo. That would have been clutch. I really need to get some ammo and I don't have anything right now. 
I do have a void grenade and that can help. Oh, uh, never mind. He just walked right out of it. <gasps> oh my gosh. It dropped ammo. Please, please, please. I just need to survive for like two seconds here. I have no invisibility. I'm scared. At this point, I was really feeling the pressure. The pressure caused me to make some mistakes and miss some shots, and I even wasted my heavy ammo on the boss while he was immune. I was barely hanging on, but I had one more shot left in my sniper. Alright, my final shot of special ammo. That's it! <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude, that could not have been closer. I ran out of ammo. I got a super lucky drop to get heavy and special ammo from one enemy, and then it took the exact amount of ammo that I had remaining to finish him off. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Callus is no more. Callus is no more. Okay, so I'm feeling good. We have 14 minutes remaining. But I'm also still slightly concerned because I don't know exactly what the next steps are of the Lightfall quest. Like, I'm only on step 17 out of 21. I do have to go, like, see Zavala and, like, talk to people. So hopefully none of those take too long. Hopefully they have skippable dialogue so that I can actually get through them pretty fast. There we go. Accept. I think I have to speak to Ikora next. Is that what it is? Yes. Okay, speak to Ikora. I'm speed running the tower right now. I have never run faster in the tower in my life. All right, skip, skip, skip. Accept. Next step. What is the next step? Go to the Hall of Heroes and meditate to receive your strand subclass. Oh, okay. I forgot about this part. You have to receive the strand subclass in order to complete the Lightfall campaign. It won't let me meditate. You can't stand on the on the cushions. You have to meditate in front of the cushions. Wh why is it like that? <laughs> okay, uh, aspects purchased. Okay, uh, it's going to give us some strand meditations. That's good. Here's my aspects. Purchase an aspect. Cool. Next step. Go see Nimbus. Oh my gosh. I think this is the last step. Step 21 of 21. Oh my gosh. I think we're going to get it in time. Nimbus, here we are. Skip the dialogue. Grab this new quest, uh, receive a pop-up about Walk Among Heroes, gotcha. There we go, and it's official! As you can see on the bottom of the screen, we got Guardian Rank Objective completed. Complete the Lightfall campaign. Lightfall Chapter 3, let's go, dude. Okay, and since it's done, we completed it with just under 10 minutes to spare. So Alt F4, close the game as fast as possible. And now it is time for what we have all been waiting for. It is time to request the refund. Okay, so Destiny 2 Lightfall. I guess it's not what I expected, uh, so I'd like to request a refund. Tell us why? Okay, uh, I guess I'll just be honest. I completed the entire campaign in under two hours, and I'd like to request a refund, please. Thanks, have a nice day. And submit request. And now it's finally time for the ultimate question. Did Steam give me a refund? Yes, they actually did. They completely refunded my $50, even though I beat the entire Lightfall campaign. Next up, watch this video on my second channel where I started a brand new account and then reviewed the new light and free-to-play experience. And yes, I do have a second channel, it's a pretty new development, but we've already published like 5 videos, so go check it out and I'll see you over there. Goodbye!